Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hey, hello. My name is Meg and we do crafty things here. So if you like crafty things, please do consider subscribing. And if you are a returning subscriber, ooh, I see you over there looking all fine AF. Mm. Thank you so, so much for subscribing and tuning in to another video. So today, we're gonna do a Rex lace tutorial. I feel like we haven't done one in a minute. So I thought, why not, you know? So this particular stitch that we're going to do today is called the pineapple stitch. And it looks like this. And it's actually a stitch I had never heard of until another channel here on YouTube, Lanyard, which if you are into any kind of plastic lace craft, you probably already follow them. But they hit me up and asked me if I could do a video on this so they could see how I would describe um, creating this stitch. And it ended up working out perfectly because while I was working on this particular keychain here um, on the live stream, one of you guys asked for a tutorial on it. So that's what we're going to do today. And shameless plug here, if you are interested in just hanging out with us, we all just craft, chat about random things. It changes week to week. It jumps around topic to topic. And we just sit and we all craft and share what we're working on. Then definitely come join us in the live stream. They happen every other Friday. So the time that this video is going up, this past Friday was not a live stream Friday, but this Friday coming up will be the live stream Friday. So if you wanna join us, definitely, check us out then. Anyways, into what you'll actually need to complete this craft. First things first, you are going to need plastic lace. There are so many different names for this stuff. Um, plastic lace, boondoggle, Rex lace. In my school, we used to call it GIMP. It's got a ton of different names, but it's this plastic, flat plastic lace, even scuba doo would work. It looks like this. These two rolls uh, were both bought at, one at Michael's, one at Stedman's, but the price tag is still on this one and the whole spool of 100 yards was $3 and looks like 97 cents. So it's definitely affordable craft. You can get smaller bunches if you're not interested in doing that much Rex lace. Um, little bunches at like Walmart and stuff with packs multiple colors in one little package. So that would work if you're looking to just do a couple keychains. Um, pretty much any craft store. If you can't find it, I would generally suggest checking the kids craft section. That's where I tend to find it. And there are so many different colors and textures and not textures, effects, I guess is the word I'm looking for. So you will definitely find something you like. Today, I am going to be using this blue and green so that it's got nice high contrast that is easy for you guys to see. Now, of course, because we're working with string, you're also going to need a handy dandy pair of scissors. Um, you are going to want it to cut off the ends of your strings and to cut your initial strings. And if you are the type to like to melt the ends of your Rex lace, you will also need a lighter. That's not really my style, so I will be showing you guys how I do the tassels on the end like I've done on this one here. So without further ado, let's flip down to hand view and get crafting. Hello and welcome to hand view. Um, I've gone ahead and cut my strings. So I've got three green for my main color and then the blue for my secondary color. So to start this stitch, we are actually going to take away two of these strings. So we're gonna get rid of our secondary color and one of our main strings. And we're gonna start off by just working with two of the main color. So you're going to want to find the center of your strings. Once you're there, you're going to want to lay your strings perpendicular to one another. Now, whatever string is on the bottom is the string you're going to want to start folding with first. So my horizontal string in this case is on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start on the right. I'm going to fold my right string across and move it into the section between the left string and the top string. And then I am going to fold my top string down over this open end that I have now created. And you should be looking like this. And then you're going to take the left hand string that you haven't folded yet fold it across 
And then with that last string, you are going to go over the string closest to it and under the string farthest from it to create a basket weave type effect, like so. Now don't pull this tight because we are going to need to do more, but you should be looking something like this on the top and your bottom should be looking something like this. So next we are going to grab our secondary color. So in my case, that is blue. And I'm going to take my string and I'm going to feed it through this stitch horizontally through the middle. So I'm going to literally just put it right through in between the two horizontal greens. And I'm going to pull it through, pull it through, pull it through, pull it through until I am working at the middle point of my secondary string. So we're looking just like this. We haven't done anything. I've just got that string sitting in the middle. And now we are going to do an over under with it. So because of how I'm holding this right now, I'm going to grab this right hand side first and I am going to do the opposite of whatever this bottom string is doing. So this bottom string here has gone under the string closest to my right hand blue. So I want to go over that one and under the far one. And pull it across, making sure to keep my blue in the middle of my project. And then this is kind of awkward. I always hold it like looser in these videos so you guys can see what's happening. And it's very unnatural for me <laughs> when this string is moving all about and everything. Okay. So then I'm going to grab my left side blue that I did not just fold over. So the one we haven't done anything with yet. And I'm going to do the opposite of what I just did. I'm going to go over the string closest to the left and under the right hand string. like so, keeping it in between the middle of those strings. And again, I'm not pulling it completely tight because we do need to feed another string in here, but you should be looking something like that. And the bottom is currently looking like this. Okay, so now we're going to grab our final main string color and we're going to do the exact same thing we did with that blue and feed it right through the center of our stitch here. So we're going to split this blue string and feed this green right down the middle of it and pull it through until we find that center point. Okay, so we're looking just like this and we're going to do the exact same thing, like I said. So I'm gonna take this rightmost string and I'm going to go over the string that is closest to it, so the rightmost string and under the left string like so. And then I'm going to grab the left side of that string that I haven't folded yet. And I'm going to go over the string closest to it and under the other side, keeping everything aligned and in check. So we should be looking like this now. And at this point, you can start to pull your project tight. So I would advise that you take your time with this. Your project is always going to look best the flatter you're able to get your base. So I find with this stitch, if I pull this base stitch really, really tight, it's going to like curl in on itself, which is not the look, you know? We've got the basket weave effect. We've got in the horizontal strings, one green string, one blue string two greens, one blue, one green. And this is what we're looking like on the bottom if you are looking to double check if you're in the right place. So now the important thing to remember when you're working Rex lace is anything that is a rounded like cylindrical shape like this pattern means you're going to be working on diagonal and you will like you can fold the strings in the same order but if you're not doing it on a diagonal, your patterns are all gonna turn out as the like squared version of that. So with that in mind, I am going to take these two vertical strings. 
and I'm gonna start with this bottom one and I'm going to fold it up and to the right of the top string and the top string down and to the left of that first string. So we're looking like this. Now we're gonna go ahead and with our center two green strings, I'm going to take the left middle green string so we can see there's still a green string on top and the blue string on the bottom. So the center green string, and I'm going to work on a diagonal. I'm going to go over the string closest to it and under the string farthest away on a diagonal. So this is moving down into the space between the vert where the vertical strings would be and the other string is. Okay, down on an angle. And then I'm going to grab its counterpart, which is the green string from that center group as well. And we're going to do the same thing over the string closest to it and under the far one, like so. And we're working on a diagonal, so this one is tilted up. Now, most Rex Lace projects, you would follow suit with the rest of the strings along this vertical plane. But in this pattern, we do not do that. So this pattern isn't quite as intuitive. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of shift these over a bit and we're gonna focus on this left-hand side. So focusing on the left-hand side now, I am going to take the top green and instead of folding across horizontally across those vertical strings, I'm going to work them across the two horizontal strings I just folded as if this were the vertical string. I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna take this top green string that's on the left and I am going to go over the string that is closest to it and under the other one, working vertically. like so. And then I'm going to grab the blue string on this left hand side and I'm going to go over the string closest to it and under the far one. Again, working this side of the horizontal string as if this blue was a vertical string. A little bit different, uh, difficult to describe. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. This is all twisted on me. Okay. So we should be looking like this. Okay. So now I'm going to kind of shift and we're going to do the right hand side. So on this right hand side, I am going to grab the bottom most green here and I am going to go over this open edge. So the string that is closest to it and under the far one, just like so, working it as if this horizontal string is actually one of the vertical strings. And then I'm going to grab the blue and do the exact same thing, keeping to the inside of that green string I just folded. I'm going to go over the string closest to it and under the string on the other side. And now we're going to pull that tight. So always I think you should always try to keep your stitch as flat as possible. It's going to give you the most clean look. Now we'll have to, because we're working on a diagonal, rotate it a little bit so that our single string side is running vertical. And once again, we're gonna go through this stitch. So I'm going to fold this bottom green up into the top right corner on a diagonal and the top green down to the bottom left-hand corner, like so. 
Now we're going to take the center green on the left hand side and we're going to go over the string on the left and under the string on the right. And then with the center green that we haven't folded on this right hand side, we're going to do the same thing over the string closest to it and under the string farthest from it. So we're looking like this. So now, instead of working these last two strings horizontally across our long vertical strings, we are actually going to work them as if they were the vertical strings to these two horizontal ones. So I'm gonna start with the top green here on the left-hand side, and I'm going to go over this top open green edge and under the bottom green loop here. And then I'm going to grab the blue again on that left hand side and keeping it to the inside of the green I just folded, I'm going to go over this bottom green and under the top one. Again, working as if this blue string is actually a vertical string and not the horizontal string that it is. So it should look like this. I'm sorry if you can hear that, my cat is trying to get into the treats, but she's already had some. So she's uh, rebelling over there. <laughs> so we're looking like this. It's kind of complicated, I know, to figure out what's going on here. You can kind of see that basket weave starting. And now we're going to move over and focus on our right hand side, where we're going to grab this bottom green and again, we're gonna use it as if it's one of our vertical strings going across these horizontal ones instead of the horizontal string it is. So it's gonna go over the open edge of this green and under the loop of the far green, like so. And now we're going to take this blue, keeping it to the inside of the green we just folded. And we are going to go over the top string and under the bottom string. Again, working it as if it was a vertical string when it's actually a horizontal string. I'm gonna make sure that's not twisted. So it looks like this, okay? And then you're just gonna pull it tight. So it looks like this. You can clearly see we've still got the basket weave effect going but you can tell that these two center greens were our vertical strings because they do have a bit of a longer loop on either end compared to these other ones. And we're just continuing that same thing over and over again until we reach our desired length. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on this a little more and I'll come back and finish this off with you guys. Okay, so once you have reached the length that you want, we're going to finish it off. I'm going to show you guys how I finish mine off here. So I'm going to <clears throat> do one more stitch here. Okay, so once I have done that last stitch, I'm not going to pull it completely tight just yet. I'm going to keep it at kind of this loose point where I can see everything looks correct, but I'm not going to pull it tight. So I'm going to start with my bottom string here. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to work our way around the outside of the project and we're going to take each open string and wrap it around the loop of the neighboring string and up through the center of that um, like square of strings. So for example, with this bottom string here, I'm going to go around this loop right here and I'm going to go up through that center square space there and pull it through. And then I'm going to move to the next string. And the next open string is this one here. And I'm not gonna wrap around the string that I just wrapped. Um, I'm going to wrap it around what would have been the next one if I didn't stick this string in here. So I'm gonna wrap around the blue one and I'm going to wrap it up into the same space that we wrapped that one 
the first one into. So I round this blue and up into this hole in the middle of the stitch there. So now we've got our two green strings coming out the top of this side of our stitch. And now we're going to move to the next one. So this one, we're going to go around the one beside it, which is this one. And we're going to go up into the center of that stitch. So instead of the square we brought the other two up into, we're gonna go up into this one. Like so, whoops. Like so. And then we are going to go to our next string. Our next open string is the blue. And we are going to go around the loop of this green and up into the center of this stitch. Just like that. And then we turn again. This is our next open green. We're going to go around the neighboring loop and up through the center. And then we go to the next green and it's going to go around the blue and up into the center. And then I'm going to take this green, wrap it around the neighbor here and up into the center of this stitch. And then we've got our blue and this will be the last one. And it is going to go around the green and up into the square. Now at this point, it's looking just wild. It's just doing doing its thing. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to grab all of our ends and we're gonna slowly start to tighten. And then like any Rex Lace project, you wanna let it sit for a little while. And this is because generally after it sits for a little while, the project, the plastic starts to stiffen up a bit and you're less likely to see um, like these stitches and stuff um, loosen up and come undone. So at this point, I've got this as tight as I think I'm going to get it. And I'm just going to let it sit. Um, generally, a couple hours is okay. Overnight is even better. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna leave it overnight. But when you're done, you can trim the tails to whatever length you want, like I did here. And you've got a nice finished project. You can feed a key ring through the top or do with it as you please. So if you guys found this helpful and you enjoyed this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. And until next time, bye.